let's talk about how to, um, you know, write some JAX code to do the MCMC simulation. And then any time left, um, we'll try to work on Labs 3 a little bit more as well. All right, so the prior and hyper prior specifications, okay, so um, this is similar to the previous slide, but now I'm actually giving particular values for those um, hyper priors for mu and tau squared, as well as this one over sigma squared as well. Okay, so um, as you can see here, normal 0.1 and 0.5. So I'm roughly thinking that, well, overall, I think the mean of this hyper prior mu is around 0.5. Okay, and I have roughly high uncertainty about it. Um, meaning that, well, if you can see the, uh, it is at 0.1, but then the standard deviation is 0.5 and all that. Um, if you believe otherwise, you can reduce that 0.5 a little bit and all that. Um, but nevertheless, uh, this is the starting point. So all this 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and those ones, uh, we will have to you know, pass that into the JAX code later as well. So let's spend some time looking at the code a little bit. And like I said, it will be ideal. It's, it's hard to fit everything in one uh, slide and all that, but if you have the uh, resources, you can put the data, uh, I should say, you can put the model that we saw earlier next to the model string itself, because in a lot of ways, um, they can be they can be one-to-one um, -one corresponding to each other. Um, so I will talk a little bit about, uh, about this general, uh, general structure and then put you into breakout rooms to make sure that you talk through some of the uh, subtlety over here. Um, so we always have the model string. That's the main part, you know, talking about how to specify the model. Um, so we have this model statement, okay? First of all, we write out the sampling model, okay? That's what the YIJs is about. And then we also have a chunk about the priors. So if you remember, we have the prior for the mu j, and we also have prior for sigma, or one over sigma squared. And don't forget, in our particular case, we also have the hyper priors, okay? So that's what the mu and tau should follow, okay? So that's the general way when you're looking at a, um, or when you're trying to write a JAX script. And I would say that it might look, uh, it should be looking more complicated than what we have done before when we don't have a hierarchical structure. But nevertheless, um, JAX script usually follows the general um, you know, format. You have the sampling model or the likelihood section. You also have the priors section, and sometimes you also have the hyper prior sections, depending on whether you have hyper priors or not. Okay. So with that in mind, there are many details going on, like writing the loops and all that. So before we look at it in detail um, together, uh, let's use the breakout room for about two minutes so you can maybe talk to your members about anything that is jumping out of the coding strategy or any questions you have about how the code is written, um, and then we can talk about that. Um, together as well. So I will invite you back in about two minutes. All right, so let's take a look and any maybe comments or questions or anything interesting that I have found so far about how we can um, write, you know, the likelihood chunk, the prior chunk, and also the hyper prior chunks. Any comments or thoughts or confusion maybe before we look at it together? Whatever is shared will be useful for us to um, to talk and address, you know, talk about and address. So feel free to um, to share anything you want to talk about. Okay, if not at the moment, um, I will talk about it um, almost line by line, and then trying to um, ask any follow up questions if anyone has any. Okay. Um, so feel free to jump in. Um, so if we look at here, um, so first of all, we have the chunk, like I said, about the modeling or the, the sampling model or the likelihood part, okay? And remember, um, we have still, so this capital N is the number of observations in total, okay? Um, but if you remember how we're doing the model right up, and I can write it over here, is we have this normal, mu j okay and sigma okay. so if you look at in this way then of course um if you want so you can see that the code is written as one loop but if you want you can also write a nested loop because you can looping through all of the j at the outer loop 
And then within it, you can loop through all of the i's from one to nj. So that's one way to do it if you want. Um, usually nested loop will take longer to, to run and everything than, than one single loop. So another way you can write the code, as you can see here, is that we're doing a whole big loop um, once, okay? And we still have the eyes for each of the observations over here. And denorm, as we know, uh, stands for using the normal model, okay? So, or the normal density. And you can see over here that, well, first of all, we have our, um, so if you remember from our previous lecture, denorm in JAX takes the mean and the precision. So that's why we have this inverse gamma square. That's what, yeah, like a short for this one over sigma square thing. We're gonna see the prior later on and all that. So you can check that later. Um, but I want to highlight how you can write the mean part um, using only one loop instead of a nested loop. So you can see that later on, we have this mu j as a vector uh, of capital J, length of capital J. So each location correspond to a particular group specific mu, okay? So what we're doing over here is that, remember we're doing mu j, okay? So we really just need to know which schedule or which group this observation I belongs to. And once we know which it is, we can you know, extract the mu j from it. So when we have a mu j as a vector, all we need to know is, well, we, if we also pass the scheduling information, a group index information as another vector going on, then if I extract the schedule itself, which will give me the j, and then I put that correct correctly, into the indexing of my mu j vector, then my mean will correspond to what I'm trying to do with this mu j. Okay. So this might be um, the most complicated part in terms of what's new from before than, uh, than here. So that's the likelihood part or sampling part. Uh, for the priors, notice that we have this mu j followed normal uh, mu and tau, I think that's what we have, okay? Um, so it is still another loop because we are having capital J number of different mu j's. Um, that's why we write a loop over here only for the mu j, okay? So we say that it follows a normal model with mu as the mean. And again, because d norm in JAX takes the precision, so you have this inverse tau square, which we're gonna also specify later. So that's what this loop is about. And then don't forget, we also have the prior for sigma, okay? So we know that one over sigma square follows a gamma. Uh, I think we use the notation A, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna follow the code over here, A and B, G over here, G stands for gamma. Um, so you have this one over sigma square, so we call it inverse sigma two, follows the D gamma, A, G, and B, G. We're gonna pass those numbers later. And then if you ever want to track sigma instead of one over sigma square, then you can have this one extra line over here. So this is probably new to most of you as well. Uh, so sigma and one over sigma square, as we know, the relationship is that if you have um, inverse sigma square itself, if you take the inverse of it, you get sigma square, and then you take the square root. And that's what it's doing over here. So we're doing the negative one power of inverse sigma two. And then once we do that, we take the square root so we can get sigma. Uh, the main reason over here is that maybe later, instead of summarizing one over sigma squared as the precision, you might want to summarize sigma itself. Um, so you could um, you know, have this line over here in Jack's code. So later sigma will also be returned and tracked. Uh, but if you don't do it here, that's fine as well because uh, you can always return track and return inverse sigma square and then do the manipulation outside of the JAX. You can write a R code and then do that as well. Uh, but this is convenient if you ever want to directly track sigma. Uh, so that's that. And then the hyperpriors, okay? Hyperpriors, uh, I think one is about mu is a normal. And then one over tau square is another gamma, okay? And so the process uh, is pretty straightforward. There's no loop going on anymore because we only have a hyperprior for mu and a hyperprior for one over sigma square. So, uh, so one over tau square. So the tau square situation is very similar to what we did with the sigma situation uh, because we need to have the inverse tau square first because it follows the gamma. And if you ever want to track tau itself, you can do the similar trick as what we did above over here. 
um, to do the square root and then the inverse power. So you'll be able to track tau and also save uh, the parameter posterior draws of tau directly as well. Um, so I think the next page, oh, let me, yeah, let me just show you also some kind of notes. Uh, it's important to uh, keep in mind. So we first of all need a vector of mu j and the length is capital J because that is the number of uh, means or mu j's are working with. J capital J is the number of groups. You also need a vector of the schedule and that will make how that was why we're dealing with this um, situation here. So we can make the code a little bit easier to write and everything. So that's uh, why we want the schedule uh, vector as well. And D norms, don't forget, it takes the mean and the precision. So that's why we have that inverse sigma square and inverse tau square. And uh, if you work with inverse tau square, you can return sigma. If you, oh, sorry, if you work with inverse sigma too, you can return sigma by doing that technique that I mentioned. And similarly for inverse tau too, you can return tau if that's something else that you can track, you want to track and all that, okay? Um, so I think with the remaining time, it might be useful to answer any kind of questions you might have about the JETS code, especially, like I said, many of the things might be new. And um, I would say writing JETS code, the most challenging part is writing the model string because you need to, first of all, understand what kind of model you're working with, what is the sampling model likelihood, what is the prior, what is the hyper prior, and then translate that into, into JAGS. Um, it is usually the most challenging part, but you know, practice more and things I think will become a, a lot more familiarized as you go along. So um, anything about this model string that still, you know, you're not too sure about, why do we use it um, after the short explanation that I provided earlier? Or do we all feel like it's fine? I, I, I will pause here for a little bit to, for you to um, ask questions if you have any. Um, in the likelihood, yeah, are we subtracting the normal density from yi's? Uh, the likelihood of subtracting the normal density from y. Oh wait, there's a tilde. I thought that was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my bad. No, I, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good, good call. So yes, yeah, so this is uh, Jack's syntax. Okay, so yeah, so that's actually a good question. So let me also just let you elaborate that a little bit more. So. As we know, whenever you have, you know, using like D norm, D gamma, because you're saying that that uh, whatever on the left hand side follows that distribution, then use the tilde. Okay. However, when it is not like uh, random, if, if it is not a random quantity and then it's just deterministic, for example, for sigma from inverse sigma two to sigma, we're doing, you know, um, uh, square root and then within square root, we're doing the inverse. So over there, we use this notation instead of tilde. Okay. So it's important to differentiate. Tilde is only used when you're specifying a distribution. So before the tilde, it should be something or a quantity that is random, like the yi, the mu j, um, also the sigma uh, or the inverse sigma square and everything. Um, and after the tilde, it should be like D norm or D gamma or D beta or D something else that, that you are working with, um, you, depending on what model you're working with. Um, but then if it's deterministic calculation, like between one over sigma square and sigma square, and also between one over tau square and tau, then it's deterministic. So you're using this error and then a little bit small hyphen over there to indicate that you're just calculating it instead of, you know, saying that it follows a distribution. So that's an important uh, distinction, I think, between, um, between, between the two. And I think a lot of times, uh, as the model gets more complicated, it could be a little bit confusing about which one to use and which one not to use. Um, but these are the main types, you know, the tilde and then the assignment sign. The tilde should be used if you're assuming that you're working with a random quantity and you should use the assignment time, assignment sign if you are doing deterministic calculation. So great question. Uh, I see that it's already 2.45, so I will stop here. Um, the slides, uh, yeah, the slides are already posted. The, the videos will be posted after class as well. So I think in this case on Friday, we will uh, continue uh, the lecture slides and um, I will also 
um, I think give you time to work on lab three a little bit, which is due next Wednesday. And um, I think I will also just try to post uh, lab four, which you will have plenty of time to work with, but lab four is about this um, hierarchical modeling. So if anyone wants to get a jump start on that, uh, feel free as well. So I will try to post that soon as well. Okay. All right. Good to see everyone. And thank you again for being flexible. I think I will see everyone from Vassar um, in person on Friday. Okay. Now take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.